On this episode, we turn to Google to see what autocomplete can tell us about popular Thai search terms. So if you're curious about what people around the world want to know about Bangkok, you'll get a kick out of this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawadee crap and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001, traded his passport for a bucket of mangoes, and hasn't looked back since. Uh, and I met Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract about 18 years ago, fell in love with, uh, for once, being taller than most people on public transportation, and uh, never left. Nice. All right, first, a huge thank to all of our patrons who support the show. Among other goodies, patrons get a weekly, unscripted, uncensored bonus episode where we talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, we just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we chatted, believe it or not, about gay and transgender culture in Thailand, and basically about how Greg and I are completely the wrong people to talk about it, which is why a future guest will educate us on this topical but sensitive subject. Yeah, yeah, that's all we're going to say about that. We are definitely the wrong people to talk about that. <laughs> but we are we are keen observers, which is why we talk about it a little bit. That's right. All right, before we jump into it, we uh, we have to mention an almost milestone. So if you can believe it, Ed, we are nearing 100 patrons. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, it warms my cockles. My cockles are warmed uh, that we have almost 100 patrons, which is just fantastic. I mean, it's really great to have your support. Uh, our patrons out there listening to the show, thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, it allows us to keep the show going and put some more time into patron-only stuff like the video we filmed in your Muban, Ed. Um, you remember that? That was, a fun, that was a fun evening. I do. Yeah, well, you know how many views it has as of this this recording date? I don't know. Uh, 6,000? Close. Six. Six. So, it's, But those, uh, were, those were quality views. Like those yeah. six people, they really got a lot out of it. <laughs> Quality over quantity, yeah. Oh, well, I guess I guess it didn't resonate with uh, with people, but whatever. We do it for the love, not for the views. So, well, we're, um, we're trying to no, we're trying to figure out what our patrons want and enjoy. So, we're going to try. Our message to the patrons is: we're going to try a lot of different bonus content, and we're going to see what you like. That's right. So, give us feedback. So, um, that was one, and there's there's a lot more coming. So, stay tuned for that. But but anyway, we're almost at a hundred patrons, which is just great. So. Um, I'll tell you what, whoever the 100th patron is, we're going to send you a nice little package in the mail, um, wherever you are in the world, just a little something to say thanks for doing us a solid. And uh, if you want to learn more about becoming a patron of the Bangkok Podcast, just head to the support page on bangkokpodcast.com. You can learn more all about it. Good deal. I mean, that's a quite, that's quite an honor. I mean, to be the 100th patron on the Bangkok Podcast, I mean, that's something you could tell your grandkids about. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. I, ma I imagine that'll be engraved in steel and and maybe a plaque or something somewhere. Maybe even a statue. Who knows? We can dream big. It's kind of like climbing Mount Everest or something like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in this episode, uh, we're going to get a little bit help from from Google or Agu, as the Thai kids are saying these days. And that'll make a lot more sense if you listen to last week's show. Um, but I was recently using Google to search the interwebs for some stuff, and I started reading some of the autofill text, you know, the predictions that Google gives you based on what other people are searching for. So I thought it might be fun to take a few of the more interesting ones that people are searching about uh, Bangkok and Thailand and chat about them here on the show. Maybe we can out-Google Google. What do you think? I love this idea. I just want to ask you a question first. So the idea is you type the beginning of something into Google, and then Google fills it in, right? Autofill. That's right. So as far as we know, there's just some kind of automatic Google algorithm that is filling it in based on the number of people who have searched. Is this like the premise of, of, of what, you're, what you're suggesting? I believe so, yeah. It's the, they, they, they're very careful to call it predictions based on the popularity of what other people are searching for. So um, it, it, will, it will try to predict what you're going to search about. I'm kind of curious. I mean, again, I'm, uh, I, I obviously I use Google all the time, but I have no idea how their algorithms work. So, <laughs> so for our listeners, we can't say for sure that these are actually the most popular searches, but we can just say that if you type this in 
this is what Google will fill in. We don't know why they're filling it in. We don't know where the date is coming from or what it means. But this is right. what Google will fill in. Right. Well, I think it's safe to assume that the, the, the data that it's predicting comes from what other people are looking for. Otherwise, I mean, that's how it learns, right? It would have no basis for... It, it must be based on what other people are doing. Either way, this is, this is what comes up when you start searching for things. So, All right. Let's so, hear some of the results. So if, if someone types in, is Bangkok blank, what, what shows up? Well, a couple of things come up, but the one that seemed to come up the, the, the quickest and the most was, is Bangkok safe? Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you think Do you think Bangkok is safe? I, I the the short answer would be yes. I mean, obviously, it's not perfectly safe. Um, I mean, in, in a way, I it, I guess it makes sense in in that Thailand is a massive tourist destination, and so tourists before they make a plan to come here, if they don't know much about Thailand, is Thailand safe? That it makes sense that that would be one of the first things that they would ask yeah and it we are right, it was the number one the first the first thing that came up is bangkok safe and people ask me this question a lot and what i always say to them is like as a six foot two 260 pound white man yeah i think bangkok is pretty safe <laughs> if, if i was if i was a five foot one uh indian lady maybe i wouldn't feel that way but <laughs> but uh so i did i did a little bit of searching and actually um um, I did. I, I landed on the U.S. Department of State website, and it rated Thailand as level one, which means exercise normal precaution. And it's okay, interesting. So, yeah. I mean, I uh, I know a little bit about crime levels in Thailand, and I do think it's kind of true that random violent attacks I think are fairly rare in Thailand. I think they're fairly rare, but they also happen. They, they happen in any city, in any big city in the world, is going to have random violence. Of course. Um, but the State Department said, uh, "quote Most criminal activity is limited to non-confrontational street crimes and crimes of opportunity, including purse snatching, pickpocketing, petty theft, jewelry schemes, and tourist fraud. Violent crimes such as murder, rape, and assault against Americans and other foreigners are relatively rare. When they do occur, such crimes typically happen at night." often when victims have been drinking and or are separated from their companions. You know, that so. makes perfect sense to me based on my experience here. I think most of my friends and myself who have experienced crime, it's, it, has, it has been something like pickpocketing or theft. So right. I, think it's common, I think it's common sense if you're a tourist or a foreigner in a country, you are, you are a potential target for uh, theft. But yeah, I think yeah. I think pickpocketing and that type of thing is by far the most common thing that happens to uh, to foreigners in Thailand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, the number two result that came up is Bangkok sinking. Is Bangkok sinking? Yeah. I, to, to me, I find that fascinating because I, I'm kind of thinking I, I don't understand um, who would be searching for that. Like, how many people are really curious if Bangkok <laughs> is sinking or not. I, I, I'm not saying it's not a major issue. I, I think it's probably, you know, it's probably like of major importance. And But I would think that most people would be unaware or not not realize that this is like a significant issue in Bangkok. I don't know, man. I, I, think, I think Bangkok, when it's in the news, when it's in the international news, it's either for catastrophic flooding or coups. You know, so, <laughs> so well, I guess you're I right. Think, I guess you're right. You know, um, and if there are listeners out there who are not aware of this, um, Bangkok, and, and again, I'm no expert, but I have read the news. Bangkok is surrounded by a river. So there's a river that runs right through Bangkok that curves around. And it's, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess Google will tell us the answer, but uh, what is uh, Bangkok as far as like sea level? Do you know what, what elevation we're at? That's, I do because I did some research for this particular question. <laughs> uh, and it says Bangkok Bangkok is actually sinking between one and two centimeters per year, depending on where in the city you are. And most of Bangkok averages 0.5 to two meters above sea level. So, so do the in math. other words, basically we're at sea level, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> Exa yeah, exactly. For, for all intents and purposes, we're at, the, at sea level. Yeah, and and so, I, I, I don't know if you saw the story that came out a few months ago, but one of the things that's not helping, it's actually having a major effect on how fast Bangkok sinks, soapies, massage parlors. Soapy, oh, okay, I do think I read something about this. Let me get this straight. So, again, for listeners who aren't aware, Bangkok is famous for having 
a lot. I don't know, dozens, many um, soapy massage parlors. Um, hundreds. And, yeah, maybe, I guess probably you're right, hundreds. So what do they have to do with Bangkok sinking? Well, a lot of these soapy places, so I'm told, uh, you go in and you basically uh, meet a girl and you go into a private room with a private bathroom and you have a shower slash bath slash ooh la la together. Um, and it uses a lot, you know, and, and, you know, you might do this, each of these rooms might see, I don't know, three, four, eight, ten people per night, you know, which comes with all the shower and the water and the bath. Basically, they use a lot of water is what you're saying. Yeah, but a lot of the places to get around paying for all of this water from the public utilities, they pump up groundwater. Yes, I think I, I think I saw an article about this and it's so bizarre. So this is just adding to the sleaziness of the whole affair. Like it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's already like a sketchy thing that's going on. So basically what they're saying is that when you go get one of these, when you have a shower or a bath in one of these places, the water could be sucked out of the earth. What it's saying is, is, it, is, it, is that men in Thailand are so horny that they are contributing to the sinking of the entire city into the alluvial mud flats of the, of the lower Chao Phraya Delta. Do you know, I'm not, like, is there a solution to this problem? I mean, essentially, the city is at sea level, surrounded by a river, <laughs> sinking. Is there a solution? Masturbation? Oh, you mean to the, <laughs> to the larger issue? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, I meant the okay. larger issue. I don't, I don't think so, man. Short of pumping water or mud uh, back down into the water table. Didn't the Dutch like solve this problem like 500 years ago? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if they solved it by stopping the city from sinking or just by building huge dikes. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. So I'm, I live on the fourth floor. That's about eight, 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 say eight meters above the ground. So that's right. 800 centimeters sink, sinking at two centimeters a year. So I've got, you about, got a while. You don't. I got work. a while. I got a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the last the last term I thought was interesting when I typed in is Bangkok was is Bangkok a mega city? Who is searching for this? I don't get it. I mean, obviously I've, I've heard the term mega city before, but I didn't know it was actually a formal term with a definition. Yeah, the only time I've heard it is from Judge Dredd, where he lives in Mega City One. Um, not the only time I've heard it, but the most the most prominent time I've heard it. But so um, I looked it up, and actually by definition, a mega city has is a city with over ten million people. And according to the CIA World Factbook, as of August this month, August 2018, Bangkok has 10.156 million people. So, yes, Bangkok is a mega city. Fascinating. You know, I, I remember back in the day that there, the, the population of Bangkok is controversial because, as you know, many Thai people, their legal residence is outside of Bangkok. Like they have a, a right. Thabi and Ban out in Isan somewhere, but they actually live in Bangkok. So the actual number of people registered in Bangkok is less than the true population. So is 10 million, yeah. is that the people registered here? Because if that's true, the actual population is much higher. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I don't know if that is the greater city area or just like the downtown core. I don't know if that takes into account all the um, the transient workers that come in and out of the city every day and live right. in the suburbs. You know, I, I don't know how they define that, but... But if, according to the to the CIA World Factbook, yes, it's a mega city. I'm curious if 10 million is the number of people registered living here, then the actual population might be 15 or 16 or 17. I, I don't know. I've heard anywhere from eight to 12. Yeah. All right. So next, I moved on to the phrase. Uh, I, I first typed it, "Is Bangkok," and then I tried "Is Thailand." Oh, okay. The first thing that came up was, "Is Thailand a third world country?" Ah, interesting. I like that. Yeah, is Thailand yeah. a third world country? I, I think that the term third world country is a little bit, in a way, it's, I think it's not PC <laughs> to, to, to go back to one of our topics from, from the bonus show. What did you find out in your research? Well, that's exactly it, actually. And I found out that the, the original definition of a third world country came from the 60s when some economist, he decided that a first world country was uh, NATO, and the Commonwealth, so NATO countries and the Commonwealth countries. Second world country was Russia and all of her, you know, satellites. And third world country was everything else. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I never, uh, I never, I never knew where those terms came from. Yeah, but over the years, a lot has changed. Um, polit political correctness, for one thing, and you know, a lot of economic upsets have happened. Countries have risen, countries have fallen. 
Um, so now there is no one definition of first, second, or third world country, and they're not even used as often as they used to be, at least officially. Um, the term that seems to be most used now, the UN uh, and the International Monetary Fund classify Thailand as a developing nation. So, uh, so maybe, so I think, okay, you know, this these may be rough, but I think, I think the term first world has been replaced with the term developed, like ED, and maybe the the middle tier now is called developing, and yeah. then uh, possibly the third world then would be undeveloped. So I, in a way that makes sense because I think yeah, uh, like Thailand is kind of in the middle ground uh, because I you know the way I you know when I talk to my students I always tell them that Bangkok is developed and uh, many other parts of Thailand I think are undeveloped. So right, yeah, the average. You know, Thailand averages out to being developing. And I've never in my life heard anyone refer to any country as second world. Yeah, that's a weird phrase. Yeah. Uh, some of the other things that popped up when I typed in, is Thailand? Uh, someone typed in, is Thailand a country? Oh, jeez. Yes, it's, it's a country. Uh, is Thailand in Asia? Yeah, it's in Asia. I'm surprised that, uh, you know, th- this is a, a running joke among Thai people. <clears throat> uh, but apparently a surprising number of... Westerners. I'm going to guess they were Americans. <laughs> don't don't know the difference between Thailand and Taiwan. I still sometimes get it. Do you speak how much Thai Taiwanese do you speak? None. Really? You've been there so long? Yeah, yeah. I do speak Thai though. Wait, wait. Are you saying that people say this to you? Like uh like foreigners say this to you? Not often, but I have had it before, yeah. Yeah, I, many of my Thai students have said that they could be on a vacation in the states or maybe they're exchange students that when they say they're from Thailand, you know, some American makes some comment about being Chinese or like there are a lot of countries in the world and Thailand and Taiwan, it does sound the same. Uh, so I guess I kind of guess where it's coming from, but there's a pretty big difference, you know? Yeah. I, I you know, my, I, I don't know the difference between um, Britain and the United Kingdom. I, there is a difference. I think I, I you know, I kind of, I think I know that difference, but I get your point. I, yeah. It's a little bit weird. You know, obviously there are, you know, things like uh, Slovenia and Slovakia, like stuff like that. You know, it's like I kind of know the difference, but I would obviously just Google it if I needed to know. Obviously, people from that part of the world, they would they would be gravely insulted. Yeah, probably. You know, it's just like uh, when I joke with my um, with my students that that, uh, you know, Westerners don't really know the difference between Thailand and Cambodia. You know, they would just kind of roughly group them together. For my right. Thai students, they, they they're like apoplectic. <laughs> like for them, there's just like a, a, a literal universe of difference between Thailand and Cambodia. <laughs> but but like to Westerners, it's kind of like like Southeast Asia over there. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like those those countries. And uh, the last one I got when I typed in is Thailand. <laughs> this one's funny. Is Thailand only for losers? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that actually comes up as uh, it actually comes up. I, I'm gonna. I, I took screenshots of all this and I'll put them on our website so you can go and check it it's out. Funny, but but who would type that in? That is just like I, I find these results interesting. In season two of the podcast, episode forty eight, Evo and I uh, did a show titled "Do Only Weirdos Live in Bangkok." Uh, interesting. Wait. Okay. So let's make sure our our listeners got that. So season two, episode forty eight. Do only weirdos live in Bangkok? And so, what was the explain the concept to me? I, well, I think the idea was mine, and and I think that if if you're going to live here as a foreigner, uh, you have to be a little bit odd compared to the standard average person in your home country. Um, most of my friends in Canada wouldn't like it here, couldn't make it here, wouldn't enjoy living here. Well, you, so, okay, you know what this, okay, this is an interesting topic and I guess I have to go back and listen to your, your, your show you guys did, but this reminds me of uh, something that I realize that I often tell people personally for me, I rarely meet a boring expat. Yeah. You know, I guess, it, I guess it's possible. I mean, I guess sometimes I do, but, um, my general take on expats is that they're usually interesting the problem is sometimes they can be interesting in a bad way you know over the years here i was at a late night bar once and you know this was like 3 a.m and i just met a random frong uh, and who was who was from belgium and we got to chatting you know late night and uh 
basically he told me he was wanted for murder in Belgium and he was on the lam. On the lam. <laughs> like on the and well, he, he was I've never very, met anyone on the lam before. No, he was very open about it. You know, he's just like I'm like, well, so what are you doing in Thailand? Oh, I'm wanted for murder in, in Belgium. <laughs> All right, I'll be sitting at that. I'm going to move over there. Thanks for your time. Yeah, right. But uh, but uh, but I, I think I think foreigners living here, we have to, if not crave, then we have to at least be okay with chaos and noise and red tape and political instability, stuff that we don't normally have to deal with at home. Yeah, agreed, agreed. You know, I think it's. Uh, I don't know what the right word is. I don't know if weirdo is the right word. But yeah, you're right. I think the the average American or Canadian would have trouble adjusting to thailand plenty of friends and friends of friends have come over to bangkok and absolutely hated it so i think i uh, I'll, I'll accept that the next uh, term i used was will bangkok and the first thing that came up was will bangkok flood again ah fascinating you know i okay to me this this result makes a little bit more sense um i wonder if any thai people are typing that in in english Mm, that's interesting. I wonder if Google translates this kind of stuff, like whether it matters what language you type it in. Be- because um, for for many people, like the floods have like a practical impact on their lives. Like it, it really makes a difference and they need to know if it's going to flood. And of course, for tourists, that would be like a, a major question. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to postpone my wedding because of the major flooding back in 2011. That's right. That's um, right. So this week I was teaching a class uh, at my university. We were talking about um, early American music, like early blues, or, or like we were talking about early blues music, and we uh, played. A, I played a song about a major flood. That there's a, a famous early blues tune about a giant flood, and uh, I made a joke to my students. I said, like, you know, for Americans, like floods are such a big deal that they write a song about it and it becomes famous but for, <laughs> but for thai people they're like yeah that was like last week <laughs> you're right 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 <laughs> you know it's yeah. like a like a flood no one writes a song about floods in thailand <laughs> you know because it's like it's like a regular occurrence it's like a common yeah it'd, thing. it'd be like it'd be like writing a song about a 7-eleven like okay, okay it's, yeah. it's not unusual <laughs> <laughs> but but um actually um I, I assume a lot of this comes from the 2012 floods 2011 2012 floods yes um which which are which were a huge huge thing in the sort of psyche of of Bangkok and Thailand as a whole, um, and actually this year there's a lot of talk about the reservoirs are unusually high for this time of year right now. So that's right. I mean, you you, you never know. You never know. Well, I really hope that um, you know that that they learned something from 2012. If our listeners don't know, like Thailand frequently floods, but 2012 was ridiculous and like like shut down like a third of the city. Obviously, like nature is not totally predictable, but I really think it was floods are so common in Bangkok. They should have been prepared even for an unusual year. Yeah, I I always make a joke about that. Like, oh, man, 236th year in a row. Can you believe it? Like, what are the (laughs) odds of this happening? Anyway, we'll get it. We'll get it next year. But also, like we said, Bangkok's only half a meter above sea level. So it's they're fighting an uphill battle, you know. (laughs) <laughs> Let's make clear, since 2012, we haven't had floods anything like that. So maybe, maybe they did make some adjustments. Hopefully. Uh, the next result I got was uh, Will Bangkok Hotel. So <laughs> that's good on you there, buddy. Um, and uh, the last one I got for this category was, uh, Will Thailand change in the future? Seems like kind of a silly question to ask. But, uh, that's um, a little bit weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could just have someone typed in, how will Thailand change in the future? Maybe that's a derivative of that. But um, actually, this question did get me thinking about something. This has no real uh, relevant in- in- information about answering this question for Google. But it did get me thinking about this really, really cool video on YouTube. And listeners, if you haven't heard it, uh, heard of it, go to YouTube and search for a short video called True Skin. Uh, and it's this really, really incredible video that takes place in Bangkok far in the future. And it was made in 2012, or at least it was posted in 2012. Uh, by a guy named Steven Zlotescu. And it's just this really, really cool, noir cyberpunk short that takes place in a future Bangkok where everyone has robotic cyber implants. And, oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, it's 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 just a really, really cool look at, at a big city like Bangkok, like 100 years in the future. God, um, I mean, I, I would consider Bangkok a, a city that would be hard to predict. You know, my... my... Yeah joke about thailand or my joke about bangkok is that it's a good example of 
what happens when a city is unplanned. You know, it's just, yeah. it's like, it's just, when you look at a map of Bangkok, it's obvious that they didn't, you know, a hundred years ago, they didn't have like city and regional planners who decided how the city should look. Like there, there was no, <laughs> there, there, there was no like forward looking design. It's pretty random. They're, 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 they're building the city. Like I'm planning my life. Like, I don't know. We'll just make it up as we go and hope things work <laughs> out for the best. Yeah. A good, uh, a good word to describe Bangkok is organic. Ooh. And uh, then I typed in Will Thailand, and almost all of the predictions were about the boys who were trapped in the cave, the wild boars. And most of them was, will Thailand soccer coach be charged, file charges, be arrested, or be prosecuted? It's funny living in Thailand and, and being aware of a lot of things happening in Thailand. But most of those things are not on the international radar. And I always find it fascinating uh, which stories poke through like the Thailand bubble and make it onto the international stage because you know something will be happening in Thailand and then I'll get a message from my mom and it'll be like is everything okay and I'll be like oh I guess you heard of you know you heard about that you know it's like there's just certain there's just certain events that that break out of Thailand and they make it on the international stage and obviously this year of course it was. The, the kids trapped in the cave. Yeah, actually, last night I had dinner with a, with an Italian friend of mine, and he is a journalist who writes for some Italian newspapers, and he was saying that uh, that was the front page news for five days in a row in Italy. Wow. Wow, yeah. it's fascinating. So, uh, so some, sometimes something like that just busts out and, and hits a nerve with the world. Yeah, certain things, you know, like the bombing at Erwan Shrine, uh, that broke out like that was international news and my my mom sent me a message my mom sent me an email my sister sent me an email like are you okay like that that was international news yeah uh next i typed in uh does bangkok and the top one was does bangkok have uber ah interesting so uh, yeah the answer is no <laughs> not anymore yeah the whole story of uber like uber was good in thailand and it they sold out to grab and the the short story is that Grab kind of sucks so far. Oh, just don't even get me started. They're, they're, they've, they've really got to up their game. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the, the general consensus is the boo. Right. Um, anyway, another, another one was, uh, does Bangkok have a beach? Wow, does- that's a weird thing for someone to type in. Technically, the answer is no, but there are, there are beaches that aren't far away. Right. Yeah, there's there. I mean, you can drive to like Cham in a couple of hours, but. Uh, yeah, Bangkok well, itself doesn't have a beach, unless you count like a particularly sort of sandy slash muddy stretch of the river, a beach, but I don't think that counts. Yeah, no beaches in Bangkok. No. And uh, last, does Bangkok have Zika? You know, the, the Zika virus. Oh, interesting. People are actually asking about that. Yeah, and, uh, for, and uh, actually I, I started typing the answer to this and I was like, not that I'm aware of, and then I did a little bit of research. And actually, yes, it does. The, um, and actually the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, recommends against pregnant women coming to Thailand. For real? You mean the American yeah. CDC? The American CDC, yeah. It says the, the, the chances of infection are low, but it still recommends against pregnant women coming to Thailand. Wow, I had no, I, I knew nothing about this. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've heard of the Zika virus, but I don't really know what it is. And it's current? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I, I, I yeah. did not know that. And uh, the last one of, of all these Google searches, uh, this one I typed in, does Thailand have Amazon? Ah, interesting. So that was that was the result. I, I think that's a totally valid question. I wish we had Amazon here. I believe Amazon came to Singapore. Is that correct? I think I read that. I think so, yeah, and it would really save my ass too because I've bitched about this on the show before about how my giant feet, I can't buy shoes here and I'm a giant <laughs> fat guy so it's hard to buy clothes here and I can I can find most things on Amazon but um, I I never know what type of customs duty is going to be charged because That's it's correct. totally unpredictable, it's totally arbitrary That's right. and I'll never know if it's just going to show up at my door or if I'm going to get a call saying, hey, you have to come out to the airport and pick up this thing and pay us 2500 baht which is, you know, 70% of the price of the thing you ordered or whatever right. it is. So, but I did read something in the Bangkok post today about how, um, the, the customs is going to be changing things now and will allow you to be charged import duties directly on Amazon when you pay. 
Oh, I like that. Yeah, because I've been in that exact yeah. situation where I've I've bought something on Amazon and then I don't know what the duty is going to be. I've, I, I've been in that situation many times. So um, yeah, it says it says online shoppers who buy from retailers abroad will soon be able to pay import duty online and have packages sent to their homes as the customs department is expanding its focus to small incoming packages. That's great because uh, very famously and notoriously those customs duties are fairly random and uh, like yeah you never know what it's going to be like uh, you know I, i've had i've had very similar packages from the states uh some of them go cu- go through customs unscathed with like no fee and then you know i order almost the same thing three months later and i have a note and i've got to drive out to uh chang Watana, and i've got to pay like 1200 baht Oh yeah, and speaking of this, I, I, I should probably mention um, one of our patrons, a uh, guy by the name of Tyler, he uh, wrote us a message and he said, but I've heard you mention a few times about finding large shoes in Bangkok and how it can be challenging to locate those. So um, you've had people in the past bring back items for you. Uh, but if you've never looked into grabber.io, that's G-R-A-B-R dot I-O, you should. Basically what happens is you say like, hey, I live in Bangkok and I want this item from Amazon. And then someone signs up for this service and says, Oh, I'm going to Bangkok. Uh, you ship that to me, and I'll bring it to you, and I'll get a couple of bucks out of it. So, oh, cool. Yeah, that's a pretty neat option. Yeah, so this is kind of a variation on the whole sharing economy thing. It's kind of like individuals taking on the responsibilities that would have otherwise been done by like a professional or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really interesting how things are changing in that regard. But uh, I still can't find shoes in Bangkok, so until I can order them from Amazon, I'm I'm SOL, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into some uh, love, loathe, or leave. And that's where one of us surprises the other with a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or hate so much that we just want to get the hell out. So uh, this week, man, it's up to you. What do you have? All right. Well, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be a love, but I'm curious what you think about this. Um, Many times this has happened to me in Bangkok where I'm walking down the street and it could be a day where it has rained at some point during the day, but it also could be a day where it has not rained. And I'll just be walking down the street and water will drip on my head randomly. <laughs> yeah, are you with me? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it, like you might not even be under an awning or something. It might come from like a 50 story building. It might come from a tree. It might come from a sewage pipe out of a you don't know where it's coming from i mean am i am am i am i going crazy here like i just don't remember this happening back home maybe it does like maybe i just have forgotten but i mean i did i lived in chicago for five years i just don't remember getting dripped on yeah and it's it's even more disconcerting when it hasn't been raining because you're like where the where the hell is water coming from right you know so i mean i you know i guess you know the best you could hope for is that maybe it's like an air conditioning unit so whenever i get dripped on i'm just hoping that it's like condensation on uh, like an air conditioning (laughs) unit but i'm you know you never know it could be some guy dumping something out of his window like who knows what it could be like gutter slime you know yeah or or some broken pipe in a urinal at a high so restaurant on the 50th floor of a steel tower somewhere that's sort of like found its way down to ground level (laughs) yeah (laughs) like this is a bangkok experience man like if you walk like on bangkok streets like you randomly get tripped on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I, I loathe it because at the very best, it's not clean water. <laughs> that's and right. at the very worst, I mean, let's use your imagination. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, you can only hope that it's, like I said, the, about the best you could do is that it's it's like like the condensation dripping off of an AC unit, which is not clean. You know, it's like... It's not, <laughs> that's right. That's you, right. You know, it's not good. And then, like, and then, like, the the possibilities of what could be get pretty gross so maybe it's better not to, <laughs> maybe it's better not to think about it you know Def, definitely a loathe <laughs> definitely a loathe no doubt about it okay so before we wrap up uh, i'd like to give a special thanks to all of our patrons who are listening now uh, as everyone knows we don't run ads or have official sponsors for the show so we really really do appreciate the support we get from our patrons and if you want to get in touch with us we are at bangkok podcast on facebook and twitter or you can send us a message via the contact form on BangkokPodcast.com. We always write back. If you write it, we will answer it. That's right. And you can find us on the Line app where we post each episode and carry on conversations with our listeners if they so wish. 
Uh, you can also reach out to me directly on Twitter, where I am BKK Greg. So thanks a lot for listening, everyone, and uh, we'll see you back here next week. See you guys. Yeah, you know, it's like certain things like the bombing at Erwan Schwein. Oh, let me say that again. <laughs> what did I say? Swine? Schwein? Schwein. Schwein. <laughs>